<laughs> Let's go watch some Inside Star Citizen and let us get professional. All right, you know what time it is. The fam is in effect. Yes, the fam is here. We're having a, a really chill time, and we're going to watch a very exciting episode. I am really, really excited about this episode. Uh, it's going to have, like, the flight and fight mechanics that are going to be introduced. There we go here. Soviet, you can see. He's like, hey, guys, what's up, YouTube? Because he knows this is going to appear on YouTube. And um, I, I, I just love the fact that they're listening to us. I'm uh, there. You go. Hey, Ryu, welcome to the stream. Dutch is there. So, like, we are going to have a blast, I think, on this episode. 15 minutes long. 15 minutes. This is a little bit longer than we're accustomed to. You know, the sweet spot is that 11 to like 19 minute area. This is 15. So, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this episode. And I'm really looking forward to 3.10 and these flight changes and turret changes. I'm really excited about this. Somebody who's like myself and, and others on this channel, very into the PVP aspect. Very, very interested in, in seeing what's coming down the pipe here. Let's watch it without further ado. Let's watch. And it's the last one, like Milky Gear said, for a while. It's the last one. They take the break and maybe do a pillar talk, hopefully. Get on, get on stream, Chris. We have a lot of teams at COG. They all work in slightly different ways, so content teams work differently to feature teams. Um, but from playing the game and seeing how you guys play the game, it was clear that it was not quite working for flight and combat. So That's to right, rectify John. that, we created the vehicle experience team. That's right, John. We're kind of We're like listening. a small kind of specialist team, so we've all kind of got kind of core interests, and that really allows us to kind of provide good feedback. What's up, Dark Angel? Welcome to the stream, bro. A really heavy IFCS bug, right? And we were like, oh my god, we fixed it, we fixed it. And it was like, oh, why are it? And I was like, oh my god, we fixed this thing, right? <laughs> like... A lot of our other internal teams are just dedicated to developing features. So they get the brief for a feature, they make the feature, they move on to the next feature. Okay, we cluster efficiency kind of curves. designs that allowed us the freedom just to tackle them in a way that it was more about trying to discover what was wrong and how we can improve it and how we can... All right. A little bit more G-Force coming design. around, though? So, you know, that was kind of one of our goals, which is to improve the kind of core experience. You don't know up front what's going to be fun, right? You, you have to experience these things. And so we kind of embrace that kind of uncertainty now. So I'd say that the experimental kind of side to it has had its kind of pluses and minuses. This way of working with, like, rough design goals meant that we get very short iteration loops and very... very short steps towards the, the actual combat experience that we want to have. As downside, it does actually add to the kind of timeline because we end up kind of putting time into things possibly we, we you know, we won't ship as a feature. But, you know, overall, we think that's a better kind of process. Okay, and so for those of you guys that aren't aware, they've they've assigned like people to a flight crew and they've been on this for a few months. In fact, they might have been on it for over half a year or so. Um, and they've been working on changing these flight dynamics for quite some time. And we're going to see the first iterations of the changes in the flight coming up in 3.10. Now, I'm not quite sure on the grapevine. I'm hearing that they're good. Quote, good. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to wait till I hit the first wave of the PTU and then I will start putting out content on the channel. So we shall see. So over the past few weeks, we've kind of be putting the final tweaks on the, on um, the atmospheric flight and the thrust efficiency. We've, it hasn't been kind of a smooth journey, but we've been working with the tech team to kind of improve some of the problems we've discovered along the way. So we want the atmospheric flight and combat to feel completely different to space All right, flight you see and combat. The, it should you, can see, you can see the difference in the afterburn, okay? You can see, you can see in zero G, you're getting quicker turns. You can tell by the tail here, the, this effect. And when you're looking here, they're doing the same maneuvers. They're showing you the same maneuvers in atmospheric versus uh, space. So you can see that there's that there is a slight gravity effect happening in the atmosphere. How much? Again, not quite sure. Shouldn't just be the same model, but with some drag applied. We want it to feel more like the, the World War II 
flight experience. You want that combat range is in closer, you want it more visceral, and you want to have a more dynamic experience. A big challenge with the atmospheric is flight so is the kind of wide everyone. range of planets we have. So we've got places like Lawville, where you come in and you've got like 60,000 feet of atmosphere to come down. And if you're carrying like an 890 jump into that atmosphere, jump. you're really going to ask yourself, do you really want to do this? Because it, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of planning to kind of land that ship correctly. And then you've got to take off and leave the atmosphere. So... And I'm not quite sure, but we're not seeing that like fast up and down forward kind of movement that we're used to when we when we set our speed limiter, unless he's just flying at the at, at a similar speed. I didn't notice any rocking back and forth there, though. But again, this is first iteration. Shutting up. The shape of the ship and the wings affect pretty much everything on the ship handling. And this is like something that's really important to me personally uh because Good. now i can i need to take care of my ship i cannot just like speed up and and hope that ifcs will correct all the errors that i'm doing with my piloting skills no ifcs cannot overcorrect everything the shape of the ship um, affects the lift and drag these debug planes we size okay. them to either increase or reduce the lift and drag in any given axis and then that will increase or decrease the maneuverability of whatever axis you're traveling in. It gives it, 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 and if you saw right there, one of the things I want to happen is this is really hardcore and some people might not agree with me is when the gladius slowed down right there, I would like to see a drop almost instantaneously, not fast, but, but starting off as a stall. For instance, if you are taking thrust off and you start to literally go very slow, that gladius should drop. I did not see that yet. I did not see that yet, but I'm very hardcore when it comes to the flight. So, so I understand if people disagree with me, I get that. Gives the ships a lot of characteristics. So just to just to say, they're still very controllable compared to like planes or so, but they're acting more like planes. And okay, good. This is like like this. It just feels real. Like you 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 feel the you feel the air you're going through. I hope um, so. So in terms of like atmospheric like the feeling just flying over the atmosphere now right. flying over planet no anti-gravity stuff is in effigy. immensely great now so these are dynamic yes, changes yes. what we're really kind or, of going for or like execute saying in the chat and i'll show it here for a moment is like or compensate with more thrusters burning from below burning more fuel so like some type of graphics showing thrusters increasing from underneath that you'll also start to feel kick in as you drop like, it's really important to feel connected to the ship. That connection comes from the environment around you as well. So, for instance, you know, directly related to the control inside the cockpit, but also the environment around you with wind. You know, um, Dutch was saying, like, he hopes that, like, going off the pad, the wind isn't too much of an issue. Now, you know, again, like, I get where Dutch is coming from because it's very hard to take off if the wind's just blowing massively. But things that... that, that um, you have to take into account as well that you normally don't in other games that you should in Star Citizen are, for instance, the weather. You know, like what planet am I landing on? Is it an ice planet? Is it a fire planet? Is it a temperate planet? Like what's the weather like around this particular type of area? These are things that make the game more realistic. I'm a little bit more in favor for having that kind of more hardcore element to it, but I get exactly where Dutch is coming from because there has to be a balance. Like nobody wants to like take off from a hangar and just like boom <laughs> you, know, you know what i mean so i get exactly where dutch is coming from but yeah uh this should make vtol significant and not cosmetic i agree i agree j dubs i agree dude for is the ability of ships to be different which means if you've got an m50 it's a racing ship it's a light ship you can pull some really extreme g in the corners but you can also pull some really cool maneuvers so when it comes to racing that's really good to define kind of the racing experience. It, it did pull down, it did pull down a bit. But also it's going to kind of take into consideration some of the larger ships and just... Oh, look at that. Just the difference in the performance now, of these ships and how... Now, okay, for instance, here, you're seeing tons of wind, tons of dust. The ship is not really... Like, they talked about the 3.10 video that I had done where we are streaming it together, and they talked about the jerk that was going to be added. I don't see the jerk right here, uh, other than me. No, just teasing. I'm not a jerk. How dare you? No. <laughs> but I don't see the jerk in the ship right now, other than me. No, I'm again. Yeah, I gotta stop it. Self-deprecation is horrible on my end. How the players compare them in atmosphere? You'll want to bring uh, the right What's ship up, for the job with regards to planets. If you've got a supply mission on 
a planet with thick atmospheric density to avoid any knocks or any turbulence throwing your ship around and potentially causing you to crash you might want to bring a beefier heavier ship so you can have <laughs> right. a more streamlined journey to your destination weather's going to play a, a big part in how players approach atmospheric good. flight good as uh let's say you were oh on, now i'm uh, seeing some turbulence there wind. oh wind is going to oh. blow uh, your ship in we're seeing it right there you're going to on that razor that but it also means that as you're flying these forces a lighter are ship change how uh you control your ship generally so like you racing a sharp right quick turn, and then fast the wind ship. slightly overcooks it meaning you'll crash if you're not careful yeah 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 you, you i like crash or damage your ship or a rather managed to take out one of your thrusters it's really going to pull in one direction oh and as a player you've got to counteract that so you've got to try and counterbalance and missing oh if you lose like a main thruster and the ship's got two you're gonna have to pull the ship it's pulling down one direction not enough not enough forward. okay 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 first iteration and they got to find a balance okay like for me that's not enough but it's nice to see it's an improvement for me because they're 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 talking about cause and effect here and i'm digging it I'm actually digging it. Uh, I'm so hardcore, though. Like, did you see how he turned port side and that thruster was, like, keeping him up? That's kind of, like, the gameplay I want to see, believe it or not. I am that hardcore when it comes to things. So in terms of, like, feel of flight, this is a right, massive right, Puma. step, which right. really, really Same excites Soviet. me. And, so in fact, in and in fact, I'm even so hardcore to say that if you have issues where your thruster is missing, you should dock in space. You should dock in space in zero G because I feel as if you're missing like thrusters or very important parts of your ship. When you hit atmosphere, it should be ridiculously difficult to the point where it's punishing you to land on a planet or a moon with an atmosphere or a gravity. You know, you know what I'm saying? Some some people, yeah, some people are actually agreeing with me in chat on that one. In Star Citizen to be a varied experience. We don't want there to be just a single way to win. We don't want right, people to right, be min-maxing stats. We don't want people to just rely on alpha strikes. And that right, really promotes player choice over just ship selection and item selection. So with everything being a lot closer and more dynamic and hectic, uh, we needed to do some improvements to how targeting works. Yeah. We're moving towards a more look based. I, I want to put the chat in here because I want to I want everybody to see what we're saying in here because a lot of people are agreeing with me right now. And I love that. So I'll show that all day long song. <laughs> but like this is very similar to the mechanics that are involved in the law system now. Right. Or that will be once once pyro is released. So, for instance, with the law system, people that love to be the NPC kind of care, Barry, you know, no offense, like NPC mission giver type stuff. Uh, don't want to involve themselves with a lot of like player and player interaction type things. They're going to stay in systems that are law abiding like Stanton. Whereas people that are a little bit more hardcore, they like player versus player interaction. They like the PVP. You know, they like that type of stuff. They're going to go to Pyro. So those types of mechanics where they're splitting up the type of gameplay with the system should also be the type of uh, split that we're seeing when it comes to like flight. So for instance, you have like your ship, it's severely damaged. You got a thruster or two off. One of your wings are off. You know, you, you hit a planet that has A, an atmosphere be a gravity and you're going to have some type of issues and and it, it, it it's going to punish you for it or just go to a space uh, port and dock in zero g and everything's fine so that splits up you know, the, the, the areas that you should go to when you have these issues. Now they're trying to find a balance. Of course, they're all trying to find a balance, but like, like Dutch is saying all about that risk versus reward gameplay. It will also separate, you know, areas where people will go to when they're damaged. So so there will be a type of, of pilot, a type of ship that you can expect coming into sp uh, the spaceports where, where a lot of the times you're going to see damaged ships coming in. You're going to see those damaged ships coming in. So anyhow, my viewpoint looks like chat agrees with me to the most part. Let's keep going. Targeting system than a, an aim based one. You can use head tracking or you can use free look to look at different targets and, and scan around the around the, your, your space and see which ones are most interesting to you. Uh, and then when you found one, you can either lock it or you can pin it. And locking it is uh, effectively it has the, it gives you all the combat information available to you that you would expect. So you get shields, you get targeting pips, you get MFDs. You can only have one of these at a time, but you will need additional targets 
that you might want to care about, um, you know, friendly targets or enemies that you might want to deal with later, things like this. Uh, that's what pins targets are for. Pinning is something that we had in the early Arena Commander patches and which was lost over time because yes. of the uh, maintenance overhead of the old UI tag. Yes. So with the new UI technology, uh, the building blocks, we can bring pinning back. Awesome. Um, though we will have them in a somewhat different format than we had before. The main aspect of pinning is that you can persistently target something and share it with your crew. And the importance of this is in a fleet battle or with a crew on a larger ship as well as like solo and smaller ships. But I think this becomes more important when you have somebody who's pretty much the, the main engineer or the co-pilot who is literally calling out the targets and pinning the, the largest threats as one, ter, uh, you know, secondary as two, tertiary three. And therefore, like all the gunners that you have on the turrets that are hopefully upgraded that we want can then push, you know, like if the pilot or the or the captain saying, OK, you know, uh, port side gunners, I want you on a uh, second pin target, uh, you know, uh, bow, bow, bow turrets. I want you on primary on on the primary target, uh, you know, aft and starboard. I want you on tertiary on three. So like that'll that'll definitely, definitely increase uh, the the awesomeness on that crew gameplay on larger ships. So I'm really looking forward to this. I hated when they took this away. I really hated when they took the pins away, but I understand it. It's nice to see that they switched to building blocks and that alleviated the problems. And again, this is what we're talking about with the progress and the development of Star Citizen that people kind of just dismiss, you know, like they forget about these things, you know, where we've had these roadblocks. Here's a roadblock that has now been overtaken, that we have jumped over and we're over it. And that's part of the fun. That's part of this project, you know, so that is a very big positive that they have done this. So... Yeah, it's weapons not officer, finished, right? We also want to have something Jay like Jones. pinning shared with other with other ships and all that, um, but that of course will have to happen in later releases. Uh, for now, we have a solid first step, which we can iterate easily on. So, if a pilot pins a target, the turret's going to see what this target is, and they can then talk about it and coordinate their attacks based on that. Nice, I love it. One thing that we learned in it. the past is that you cannot ship a new feature if you do not have appropriate UI support. So for the turrets, we created a hey, Ross, very welcome to the stream, bare bro. bone UI. That turret UI will tell you exactly where a turret is pointing. It will tell you about the state of the turret. It will tell you what kind of like modes on the turret you have enabled. For example, combined versus staggered fire. Turrets are now a threat. They deal damage. And so players are really going to have to reconsider how they might have approached combat scenarios. About time. The new turret system allows multi-crew exactly. to be more Here viable gonna be in gameplay. We added a thing called fixed assist, and this is not just for the turrets, it's also for the fixed weapons. It takes an angular offset between your current aim and the aim direction of your target, and then based on that ratio, and if we are within certain thresholds, it nudges your bullets a bit towards the target. As oh for the boy. control method, we're, gonna we're hear some screaming. included a VJOY style control scheme, which is the same Easy that mode. we're using in ships. So <laughs> this is what I heard Dig That talking about. Uh, he's he put a little blurb Dig That when he was talking to Execute on on the last Star Citizen leaks where they were talking about the Odin, and this is where uh, I I had heard Dig That talk about how he had heard turrets are kind of OP at the moment, and I think it's due to this. And we got to be careful we don't go the complete opposite direction where we've made this completely completely easy mode as well. Like we've just heard now that they're nudging bullets, you know, like so you're going to you're going to get some lash back on this, I think. But we'll see. We'll see. I want to test them for myself. So, um, <laughs> have, there's going to have like a a Dutch, cursor Dutch on your, crying and coming across off the turret. I feel it too, and bro. by slaving that video around, your turret will follow the motion. I hope so, Ghost. I hope you're we right. We also dude. edit a uh, velocity limiter. So with your mouse wheel, just like in any other uh, situation in the game, you can ad adapt your your velocity and for turrets that would be the rotation of velocity and um, this hookup <laughs> with all the access bindings makes makes it actually quite nice to control turrets with a with a hotas as well so you can just have your, like your left hand on your on your throttle which is then just controlling the turret speed Ooh. where and 
with the rest, you just control the turret direction. So in the past, they looked more it was effective. quite easy for a group of uh, small They looked a lot more effective right there. Overrun one of the larger ships, despite its many turrets available. <laughs> uh, you know, just for just for some clarification, I saw Erad when I went in, and I <laughs> I had some fun against him in in uh, the Carrick, and I was and I was in my cuddy. I saw him and his crew. No offense to everybody flying with Erad that day, but those turrets weren't hitting a damn thing for like fifteen to twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just for some clarity, you know, now we're seeing these turrets. It's like, boof! It looked very, very effective. This could be a huge upgrade to turreted ships. So much so that I think we're going to hear it. I think we're going to get ready for my vial for some tears. <laughs> Whereas now, you might find that you're a little more careful. You're a little more considerate. And All right. Maybe Nothing bad with that. If you got uh, turrets on your ship, your should be something before, you should be afraid of. Uh, engaging uh, a large ship. <laughs> That's yeah, Soviet. Thank you, Anarchy, for that subscription, more, dude. Down. Check out this Arco. hammerhead. One more. You're nearly done. Bam. Yeah. Nearly What's it gonna be? Thank you, you. thank you, Anarchy. Yay! Ooh. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So the changes in 310 are the next step in the flight and combat experience. They're not the first, and they definitely won't be the last. We don't want there to be a single way of just winning combat, no matter what. We don't want DPS races or min-maxing stats. We want you as a player to have as much influence over the outcome of combat as the ship you've selected. We know some players embrace change a lot and some are very scared of it, but we do encourage everyone to get in game and test it out for yourselves. Yes, yes. We're really yes. excited for these changes for Star Citizen and we look forward to seeing what you do with them. The way that ships fly and fight the... This is interesting. I cannot wait. I am very hyped for 310. I am really now very hyped for 310. This has hyped me to a level that is almost not containable. <laughs> like, I am very excited because flight and combat is right at the top of the list for this game for me. So I, I, am, I am barely able to contain it right now. Barely. Their way through space and atmosphere alike is at the heart of the Star Citizen and Squadron 42 experiences. And as John said, these changes for Alpha 3.10 are the next step in that continuing evolution for both. If you'd like to learn more about what's happening, you can check out the comm link that's currently available now on the robertspaceindustries.com website, as well as keep an eye out for when wider PTU testing becomes available for all so that you can get in and try it yourself. With that, we'd like to bring this quarterly season of ISC to a close. Oh, but before we let you go guys. for the next few weeks, we wanted to try something new and run down some of the features, fixtures, and fixes coming your way in the upcoming Alpha 3.10 in a new segment we're creatively referring to as the patch report. Let's get to it. Uh. In no particular order, we've got vehicle impounding, where different infractions can have various fines and durations, meaning lighter penalties for blocking pads and a longer They're duration and forfeiture for crimes. Sig's gonna get hardcore on, on uh, pad ramming. Like, I just feel it in the wind. They're gonna get real hardcore on it. <laughs> like pad ramming. Also, players lingering over landing areas without permission should now yeah, see no. a countdown timer warning them of imminent impounding should they not withdraw. Delivery mission improvements, where Alpha 3.10 begins the process of a complete overhaul to the way they work, starting with local deliveries, which now have multiple pickup and drop-off locations. Of course, there's also a new uh, <laughs> drug delivery mission for those who enjoy visiting the darker corners of the verse. Dutch says Sig just gave us a pad ramming tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> Vehicle paint schemes are coming to vendors throughout ah. the scan system, allowing players to personalize the look and feel of your vehicles for AEWC earned in-game. Interesting. Electron damage weapons like the yeah, Axe Cap that. Sniper Rifle that. and Uberall Pistol it. bring an electric new way to take out your enemies outside of their ships More bounty hunting mechanics, more bounty hunting mechanics. Body we dragging see the will allow upgraded. unconscious or deceased characters to be dragged around the environment by other players. Medic. And I'm certain won't Medic. make for some amusing videos from the community. Prices were what, Melkier, on those on the Restricted paint? Was it 5K? D2, where we've finally done away oh, with the last remnants of the ugly red area God, I hope that's and not. implemented a new spline-based landing system that will help guide pilots to their correct destination in a way from <laughs> He's deceased after that drag, says Jadas. Wow, there are so many changes coming in 310. I really feel like this is a big one. 
I really feel like 310 is a is going to be like a game changer. It's going to be a huge upgrade for this game. I'm really hoping so. From places they shouldn't be going. New thruster efficiency curves that lower the strength of thrusters in atmosphere depending on the thickness of the air, which then in turn feeds into a complete overhaul Welcome of vehicle fan, aerodynamics Derp. you just heard about. High-speed combat changes designed to bring your opponents in closer by slowing the slew rate of gimbaled weapons and the lock-on time for missiles at top speeds, encouraging a more engaging combat experience. New targeting methodology that should help players better find and keep track of their targets. Turret improvements which bring a new control scheme to bear that pilots should already be familiar with in an effort to make oh, riding passenger and multiple that was a nice more fun right and exciting. AI improvements like cover usage, shotgun assault tactics, and a better sense of when Get to excited. move and hold position all aim to make FPS engagements with the compass. Yeah, we talked about that Dutch. more We're dynamic about the and interesting than ever before. Visual the turret had a compass in it, by the way, and we talked about this on last week's stream because we saw the leak and we talked about how that's going to probably translate over into our helmets, which would be freaking fantastic. Please, Sig. Make that translate over into our helmets when we're on a planet or a moon. We would love it. We would love it. Visual improvements to the M50 and balance changes to the car 2 wall mean there's something new to look forward to for owners that of these speed. That ship is so useless but so sexy. <laughs> this car 2 wall, let me tell you, I had a fun damn time flying this thing, but so useless. So useless. I hope they've done something. I hope some improvements help this ship out because it is a really sleek looking, cool, fun flying ship that does nothing. <laughs> Speedy and nimble spacecraft, respectively. Grimhex is getting a new shop, new oh, hangers, I forgot and a about new Grimhex. viewing area to support How the can future I forget? release we just of scramble about races. Mm. Not to be left out. Rip new Babbage. I hope those races are are being able to be public and on the boards because I want to do some little wallet to wallet transaction transaction gambling. You hear what I'm saying? You guys can meet me at Hex and we'll bet on the races. You see what I'm saying? We're gonna start ourselves a nice little gambling ring, a little a little cartel, if you will. We're gonna gamble on the races at Hex. Hopefully they they have that public. That's gonna be fun. Wallet to wallet transaction gambling on races. The gamble. Just getting hangers and perhaps a more impressive new shop of their own with the upcoming <laughs> factory line and its new array of mobile so players can purchase. You're damn right it is. So then the various planets and moons all throughout the Stanton system are seeing the return of outposts, derelicts, and caves see, this, that were lost after the and we talked about these derelicts, and we want to see this happen more naturally. Like, I understand that they're designing these, you know, they're putting these on plans, they're putting more, and good for them, you know, for doing this to, to make it feel a little bit more uh, immersive and real. But we would like to see these actually happen, you know, with, with real NPCs getting shot up in the atmosphere, with, with players getting shot up in the atmosphere, that, you, that your wrecks are the derelicts that scatter across all the moons and the planets like that's how we would rather have it i think eventually we're going to see that but just not right now just not right now the conversion to planet tech before, yeah exactly but and now FG says we need eye lighting, cash right exterior right, right. dressing and protection from the weather elements outside i feel like i'm leaving something out i mean sure we didn't cover everything that's in the upcoming alpha 3.10 but there's something else oh come on i'm sure you'll figure it out uh, for another quarterly season what? of Inside Star Citizen, I'm your host, Jared Damn Huckabee. You. Thank you for watching. Jared. Thank you for playing. And we'll see you all next month. <laughs> oh, man. Come on. Come on. Woo, guys. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. Oh, wallet to wallet, probably, right? Right. Oh, my God. What a good time. What a, is it? The Hercules could be <laughs> like, uh, oh, oh my God! What's up, Cash? How you? <laughs> I love the Jared emote. That's great. Wow. Okay, so don't worry. We'll do more streams. Uh, you know, even though they're, you know, they're gonna have a break here with these. Don't worry. We're still streaming. Uh, we still do DG in the mornings. I'll start them up next week. Uh, and I know I think next week's a holiday week, so it might be a little crazy. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for supporting this channel. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Dark Angel, for the subscription, bro. Thank you. Thank you. And um, 
I had a fun time this morning with our watch party with the, some of the Cyberpunk 2077 stuff. That was a great time. This was a great time. We're always doing stuff here on the channel. We're always streaming. Please join the fam. Please join our Discord. Uh, I'm going to be doing more interviews. Uh, I'm going to put more podcasts out for our VIPs. And uh, I'm really working for you guys. And you know I love you. Love my fam. Awesome to have you here. Thank you, Execute, for being here with us as well. That was fun. Get my Discord fixed so that we can actually record some audio as well and get some more guests in during our Inside Star Citizen reviews. That would be fun as well. Uh, we just upgraded our Discord in the Star Citizen area. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Disco, for that subscription, dude. Is this the, the Disco Lando? <laughs> that would be great. But I appreciated everything. I had a wonderful time during this season throughout the two years now that we've done this. Is this disco? Is this the disco? Jared, what's up, man? Thanks for that subscription, man. We, you, you've, you've offered us tons of entertainment. We appreciate your hard work, man. I know sometimes we get a little bit crazy, but we love you and we thank you for all the hard work that you put into these for us. And uh, I look forward to the next season. And I'm really looking forward to 3.10 right now. <laughs> Who in their right mind would pretend to be me, says Jared. <laughs> uh, we all would, dude. We all would. All right. So, I will see you guys on the next Vitter stream. Thanks, everybody, for all the support to the channel. You guys are amazing. More streams on the way. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you.